All right, cool. So, um, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, everyone. We are going to kick off any minute from now. Um, let's still give a few minutes to the you know people that are yet to join us. We apologize for sending the link late. I want to believe you guys can hear me well. I, otherwise, I'm going to use um, an headphone. Thumbs up or message, chat if you can hear me well. That, well can you guys hear me well? Yes, I can. Yes, All I right. can. All right, cool. cool. Okay. So, Dapo, please check your WhatsApp. Um, I'm expecting something from you. All right, in a moment. Let me just copy what you can see to this tool. You're welcome to Thought Leadership Series. Um, Tosin, you're welcome, Omar. Welcome, Dari. We should have something now. Okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to copy what you sent to me. Yes. Welcome to our Thought Leadership Series, um, everyone. Glad to have you join us. Um, please drop a reaction, drop a message, um, just say hello and um, let us know how you're doing, where you're joining from and what's the weather like currently in your area. Um, welcome to see, okay, yeah. Um, Omar, yeah, good evening. Good evening, um, Dari, good evening, Tosi. I hope the weather is okay. It's raining cats and dog here. Um, it's raining cats and dog here in Rochester, in the UK. Um, I hope that's not the same thing in your area. So, 
I'm glad to have you guys join us. Hopefully, we would have more people join us. But um, like they say, many are called, but few are chosen. Let's hope that uh, we can have the few to at least be running into their tents um, as the session progresses. So, yeah, you're very welcome. We are very fortunate today to have um, our speaker um, with us. Um, in person of DAPO or Modular. Um, DAPO Modular is a forward looking and upward moving person, right? Um, I got to know DAPO when I joined AFTIA, and I can say that it's unarguably one of the most energetic and, you know, forward thinking persons, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, AFTIA and, um, you know, things that concern the association. He is a life enrichment specialist. Well, you know, I don't know any other life enrichment person. So he's probably the only one that I know that bears that title of a life enrichment specialist. So if you guys remember that um, there's a governor, I think governor, of, um, is it Aquaibom State, that said he's going to appoint um, a commissioner for enjoyment you know, something like that. So these are the maybe the type of people that would have attended that for the training before. Please, let's do well to mute so we don't get in each other's way. Thank you for joining, Teofilos. Please stay muted. Stay muted. That but unfortunately, because um, I think I'll try and make it, it would have been good to make it a co-host because if you are the host and someone is not muted, you would, you would you are the only person that has the power to mute them. So we just apologize, but good thing is you won't be having to admit you won't be having to admit anybody because um, I've made it. There's no waiting room. But if someone is not muted, you have to be the one to mute them. So I hope they don't distract you during your presentation. So like I was saying, um, Idako is an author. is an is an author. is a public speaker. is a capacity builder. So if you want your life to be enriched, right? You need to listen to that one, definitely, right? Hopefully, you can also get an appointment as, you know, like commissioner for enjoyment and all that, because how do you make your life enriched? We all need our lives to be enriched, right? And that's why it's going to be taking us on the rules of the room. And that was profile is loaded. I'm just going to try and make it as brief as possible, right? Is a member of um, various associations, including Institute of Marketing, is a member of um, Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supplies Management. Um, is of course one of our senior members in AFTIA. Is also a senior member of Chartered Institute of Information and Strategic Management. He's an alumnus of the Enterprise Development Center, that is um, of the Pan African University, Lagos. Um, he's an alumnus of DLA, which I also happen to be an alumnus. Um, he's, a, he's got life coaching certification with New Skills Academy UK. Um, he's a mindfulness coaching certification, New Skills Academy also UK. Also holds a degree in commerce and enterprise development, um, in theology, business administration, and he's got a doctoral degree in information and strategy. So we have with us Dr. Dapo. Or modular. There's a lot to him. He's got vast years of experience across various industries. Um, you know, just name it. He's if you if you follow him on LinkedIn, he's always bowling, you know, always bowling, training private sector, public sector. He's a well sought after speaker. So he's an outside the box thinker, an insightful trainer who manages to inspire his audience and brings clarity to learning topics. He's an entrepreneur. Um, and it, an entrepreneurial developer, meaning it develops other entrepreneurs, and is the president of Pedal Incorporated. That's Pedal, P E D with a double A L, and is a convener of an annual youth, youthful and useful conference. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're excited the way I'm excited, join me with a round of applause. If your hands are not busy or with a message in the chat room with 555 showing your, your clapping. Let's make welcome our speaker for today, Dr. Dapo Omojola. Dapo, the floor is yours. You're welcome.
Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. My guys in the house and every guys. All right. Okay, so um, let's just dive straight into this. Um, sorry, my video. Okay. okay, so we want to try the rules of the room. I mean, how to take our stage and leave our audience um, begging for more, as it were, as facilitators. So I want to crave your indulgence because um, there are a lot of gurus in the house. So some of the things I will say also might be basic. So um, that's not to insult your craft, but it's just to um, carry some people along. Um, who I personally know, who decided to join, and who might not be as skilled as most of us. So I won't be, um, what's the word now? Assuming anything. I'll just say, um, just like we all are on the same pedestal, okay? So um, the idea for us basically is for us to be able to make impact during our um, training or any of our speaking engagement as a facilitator, so that we leave people with the right impression of good delivery, um, which of course is a combination of many things. One of which is our charisma, um, which is born from the place of preparation and our skills at communicating. So um, at this point, I need to tell us that your delivery starts when you step into the room. So most times we think our delivery starts when we click the first slide, or you know, when they introduce us, hey, 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 he's coming to the podium, or he's coming to, to the microphone to talk. But really, our delivery starts the moment you put your leg into that room, the moment you enter the room, the moment perhaps you're still talking with the HR, the participant are seated, the, um, that moment where you're still trying to set up and all that, your delivery has started. And we need to be very conscious of that, okay? So um, by the time we start, our communication now carries a whole lot more of um, what makes for a good delivery, confidence in engaging our audience. And where does confidence come from? Confidence comes from the place of knowledge. Um, and the way I usually say it is that as facilitators, as trainers, as public speakers, a sense of authority is conferred on us. So the implication is we think or we believe, we assume, we've concluded that you know at least a little more than every other person here. So that's why we have called you to come and do justice to this. So what I tell people is that you must at least know a little, that's just to say it conservatively, you must at least know a little more than your audience, more than the people you are addressing. So it means you need to be an SME, a subject matter expert. And that may also talk to the fact that most of us or some of us are in the place of wanting to do everything. Um, we should be able to eat that humble pie when things that are out of your purview comes to you to be able to say, hey, I'm not an expert in this field. Because in our quest to make that money, in our quest to, to close that gig, we are also eroding our credibility because there's no way you will do so well in something that you are not vast at or in. So we need to have that confidence and that confidence comes from the place of knowledge. I know what I want to come and share. And um, in some instances where I train about public speaking, I tell people that one of the ingredients of confidence is that knowing your stuff. It is not arrogance, it is not pride. I just know my stuff. So it's place a little sheep on your shoulder if you like, but you need to have that confidence that I know my stuff. You know why this is further important? <laughs> Sometimes if you're not careful, people seated in that audience know as much as you do, or even a little more than you do. So we really need to up our game. Um, for me, if I'm going to have any session, 
no matter how long I've taken that session, no matter how familiar I'm with that session, I go at it again as if I've never been there before. Because new information could have come up, new ideas, new things, modulations, and all that will have come up without us, um, without us knowing. And um, I think it's about an experience my, my wife had. She, she used to be a sports person. So back as an undergraduate, she was um, a hockey player. So they went for this inter-campus, the Nougat games and all that. So I forgot the school is, she said they were playing with. And that school was beating them silly because the guys who receive the ball and turn with the ball. Meanwhile, their own lecturer, their own coach had told them that, no, you don't turn with the ball. Not knowing that that rule has become obsolete. You know? And that's end them a loss in the game. So in this game we are in too, we need to be on top of our game. And um, the place of, of humility is also vital because there are instances you're in a class, you are citing an example that is no longer relevant and someone is trying to chip in and say, hey, recently this had happened, this had happened. Um, you should be humble enough to, you know, get the information and adjust accordingly. I, I, I tell my audience, I say, I have come here to learn as well. I'm not on that moral high horse and say, hey, the, the dawn is here, that person who knows has come. No, it is a facilitation. I've come to learn as well, and I make it a point of duty to learn from every class that I find myself in. So we need to stand tall. Um, you know, still talking about confidence, being able to look people in, in the eye. Of course, we are talking about different kinds of presentations here as a facilitator, as a conference speaker, as a public speaker, um, as someone who is making a pitch. You should be able to um, have minimal, modest eye contact with people, all right? Um, the implication is that if you're not engaging people with our eyes, there is that possibility for them to, psychologically, it is assumed that I'm hiding something. It is assumed that I am not confident. It is assumed that I am fidgety. It is assumed that I am nervous. So these are the um, non-verbalized cues they get from that act of not being able to look them in the eye once in a while. Um, like most of us, we know what we heard then, back then, is that when we are talking to a, a number of people, you just look over their heads so that you will not be intimidated or all that. I mean, that is no longer relevant. It's, it's not a relevant information. If I'm speaking to people and I keep looking above their heads, I mean, it's like I'm staring in the sky and it won't, the, the connect won't be there. Okay, and of course we need to speak with a clear voice. Okay, um, in fact, I, I, I did some, I, I read some stuff or I listened to some stuff where it was ascertained that the weight of our voice is also a sign of confidence. Okay, um, the modulation of the voice, you're not speaking in monotone. You're not speaking like someone who was dragged to the class or forced to the class. So you go, you go, uh, why we are here today is because we want to talk about how to um, have your class so that there will be monotone. You're just going that way. Um, you're, you're likely going to kill the audience with boredom and um, you're likely going to get them disinterested. And I think I forgot to say that um, okay, I'm not sure I'm thoroughly following the slide. Well, let, let me just keep talking. I, 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 I skip to say that, you know, I said earlier that your presentation starts immediately you step into the class. They are looking at you, they are assessing you, um, they are looking at your outfits, they are looking at your carriage. Did you walk into the room like someone who is beaten and battered with the weight of Nigeria on his or her shoulders, or you're walking in? shoulder square, looking forward, fair man shake to people you are meeting by the door. They all convey confidence, okay? Greeting everybody, greeting people. Hey, hello, how are you? They all convey confidence, all right? And for those who might have some mayor of stage fright, that has a tendency of killing such frights, all right? So when you start your delivery, what I said I missed earlier is that you have the first 60 seconds, 
to get hold of your audience. Now, psychologists say that people form an impression of you in the first 60 seconds of meeting. So they just go, it looks like this guy is going to be arrogant. It looks like this person is shy. It looks like this person is, they just form an opinion and you don't have any rights over their opinions. Is this, it's so cheap. That's why everybody has one. So it is my responsibility to create that impression within the first 60 seconds of my delivery. If I cannot get them on board within the first 60 seconds, I'm likely to spend a greater part of that delivery trying to find them, trying to bring them on board. All right, so we need to be very conscious of that. And as we progress, we might have to talk about the different kinds of ways to enter into the room. I might as well just go into it. Um, when my time is up, I know it's up. I may not be following this slide thoroughly. So um, you, you can enter into the room. I'm not talking about the way you walk any longer now. I'm rather talking about your delivery, okay? Um, you can start your session by giving statistics, people want to listen. So I've come to talk about how to command the room. And I'm saying, do you know that 30% of every public speaker enter the room wrongly? And, you know, it creates some kinds of, you know, vibes. Or I'm, I'm coming, I'm saying, um, I want to come and talk about how to control the room. And I'm starting with something like, um, do you know that I will have lost to talk about how to control the room, but the remote control is not in my hand. That's a light humor. And um, people warm up to you, okay? But if you know that your humor will fall flat, please stay, stay away. <laughs> stay away. But it's a good way to, to warm yourself into your audience. I remember I was um, the guest speaker at a conference sometimes back, and um, some people are talking before me. And this for me was just spontaneous. I didn't plan it. And I just discovered that what I was hearing more was um, the protocols, the CM area, I'm standing on the protocol, I'm standing on the protocol. I just put it together. And by the time I was opening, I just said, hey, I'm here. I would have loved to stand on existing protocols, but I can't see them. I can't see anything to stand on. And it elicited you know, some giggles and I was able to you know, start my presentation. So these are part of the ways that we, we, we can start um, um, we can get into a class, you know, our voice, okay, you, you, can, you can sense a lot of things through the voice, especially when you're seeing that person. When you're on the phone with someone, there are sometimes you just have, are, are you just waking up? Did I wake you? You didn't see him, but the tone of the voice, or uh, you're saying, what's the matter with you? You sound low, you sound down. The voice. Voice, the tone of the voice. Communicators have told us that it carries, you know, a sizable um, uh, portion of um, communication, our voice, okay? Um, I've talked about exuding enthusiasm for your topic. If you don't like what you want to talk about, how do you expect me who wants to listen to you to like it, okay? You can see that enthusiasm in me that I'm, I'm, I love what I'm talking about or I'm passionate about the topic of discourse. So if that is not there, there's no way, because it's contagious. That enthusiasm is contagious. So you get into a class with that low vibe, low morale and all that, and you are saying, ah, why are you so dull in this class? You are not flowing, you are not following me. No, you brought it, you brought it along and you sold it to them. So that enthusiasm, even in your delivery, must be, must be obvious, you know, they are, they, are, they are likely going to flow along with you if you, um, if you are enthusiastic about your, your topic. And then you need to know your audience. You need to know your audience. Earlier today, I, was, I, was, I went to speak at a conference, and before then, I had, had asked the convener, who are these people? That is knowing your audience. Who are these people? You want to go and facilitate the training, you don't even know the cadre of people who will be there. Are they going to be management staff? Are they mid-level managers? Are they factory workers? Who are they? You need to have that understanding and know your audience. So what do they need? Of course, for those of us who are facilitators, who are trainers, you know that before any training, or any facilitation, you will have done your needs assessment. So 
during that period, you should have gotten some of this information. But like I said earlier, I'm not assuming anything because not everyone here, majority of us are skilled, not every one of us here is um, on that pedestal. So that's why I'm just um, making known everything, okay? So what is your audience expecting from you? What are they expecting from you? You need to be conscious of that as well so that your style will be fashioned to cater for them. And one of the ways, so for me, I've done, pardon me if I'm referring to me too much, I think it's the closest person to me. That's why I'm using the example. Um, I've done a couple of things on emotional intelligence and we know that emotional intelligence is just about everybody and everywhere, right? So I've done it for teachers in schools before. And at the point in time, a set of medical doctors Ask for the same topic. Now, let's look at those two. I'm not going to say because I've done this for teachers before and just come to doctors and start talking about lesson notes and curriculum. You need to understand where they are coming from. You need to understand what it means to be on night duty and have to resume. You know, all those parameters, there are challenges, the ratio of doctors to patients in Nigeria, the United Nations standard, all those things, all those information are needed. These are things that you tell them and make them connect with you, all right? And of course, you are going to speak to um, a group of engineers, your examples too. I can be in a class where you have medical doctors and I'm using examples that are irrelevant and almost incongruent with the discussion, okay? So when I know them, it will help me to cater for um, their needs and tailor things towards um, their need, okay? Um, that is the only way or the best way that my content can resonate with them. Of course, after trainings, we have assessments and you hear um, some of the questions we ask in our assessment um, was the time enough, were the examples accurate, were, you know, things like that. And some people get, you know, negative reviews because of a little, um, a few of these things that we don't put in place to ensure that we connect with our audience. We are not giving them rice when what they want is uh, apple. <laughs> There's also the place for preparation, okay? Plan your facilitation thoroughly. Um, haven't developed your slides. I know we have had a ses session about that before, um, taken by the delectable Zoma. And we've also had a session about storytelling. So all these things come together to make for a thorough um, um, preparation. You need to plan for your facilitation thoroughly, plan your time, arrival time, your slots and every other thing, even your material, okay? Is it stored on flash? Are you putting it on cloud? Um, if it's on a flash, your flash can mess you up, but if it's on cloud, wherever you are, you can always download or, you know, you put it on your, you send it to yourself on any of your social media platform so that you, you don't lose them, okay? At least for that, um, that occasion. I'd been there before, I got to the class, the flash messed up, and we said um, to copy, I just, that day, I just, that nothing was working because my preparation too, I must admit, was poor, right? And um, going back to where we started from, um, without sense of modesty, I knew my stuff. So I just had to do it without, you know, following the slide and all that, okay? That talks to knowing your material in and out. Um, some of us are executives. We have um, our subordinates make slides for us. Don't be like our politicians whose scripts are drafted for, and they can't even read their own script. It's 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 embarrassing. Okay. So even if it's your subordinate making your slides, once he or she is done, you've vetted it. You should be able to sit with it, internalize it, and own it. So that nothing is strange to you when you're presenting. But it is the duty of Mr. A, it is the duty of Sister B to do it, and he has done it only for you to see it for the first time in the class. That won't be too, um, that won't be too, too, too good to do. Um, we need to plan our facilitation thoroughly and know our material in and out. 
we structured outline of things we want to talk about because one of the challenges, and this is what our slides do for us, one of the challenges, especially if you are skilled at what you do, is to go off course, all right? You just discover that you have deviated further away from the cross of your discussion. So if you have a structured outline, it guides you, it really loads you into where you should be at every particular um, point in time. And of course, anticipate potential questions. I don't know how many trainings you have attended in the course of your career, but you're going to be speaking to people who attend trainings almost on a regular basis. They have heard a lot of people. They have heard a number of people. So in themselves, they are an encyclopedia, as it were. So we should anticipate the kind of questions that can come from them. And that is why, um, let me quickly knit this together. That is why you are, you are, their perception of you should not be that of an arrogant person, number one. Two, that is why you also should be humble to learn from them. Because if you fail in this two, those encyclopedias in your class, they will show you shaky. Their idea is let's cut him to size. What do you even savvy? What do you know? In fact, what you are taking him, the person who took him earlier is a professor. So what are we talking about? If you are not yet a professor, they want to cut you to size. Even if you are a professor, that other professor was a 20-year-old professor. You, you are just five-year-old professor. So they just want to cut you to size. But if you are not coming to the class with that air of excessive superiority, between you and I, you are superior. If you are given a mic at any fora to stand in the front, that superiority has been vested on you, even if you don't want, but you are not throwing it in our faces. That hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I mean, I'm here, I'm the best thing, all right? Um, you will see some troublesome people in the class who want to cut you to size, and you don't want that because it can get less sometimes. Right. So, so we need to anticipate a kind of, of um, um, potential questions or challenges that may arise during the session, okay, so that we'll be able to mitigate them as they come. So when we are well prepared, you know, it helps our confidence. For me, one of the things that affects me in any session is if I am late, I will not feel fine. I will not like myself. And um, aside the um, few here who are not within our climb, if you're in Lagos, for example, you know that you have traffic to deal with. So you need to factor it in into your journey. I know sometimes you just cannot help it, but let it not become a style. Okay, let it not become a style. Um, I was still telling someone today, I said, hey, I don't like the way I was held down today because I had so much time, you know, I kept to my own time, so much time and you are not coming up and all that. But still, I don't want to be deterred. I would rather that than to be on the road and somebody's, you know, pestering me with calls. Where are you? Where are you? I mean, it's not professional. It's not professional. So we need to be well prepared you know, for any of our engagements and is going to um, give us a whole lot more confidence even as we do so. All right. So last, last, our last session. Okay, thank you, sir. Our last session, we talked about storytelling and the facilitator was so fantastic. He broke it down for us. And we also had other contributors, I remember, um, the electrifying diary who talked about stories not actually being stories like you're telling stories. But stories are a very, very wonderful tool, okay? Especially when it looks like um, you're losing your audience. You know, I tell you what, when people hear that, they are ears to it. There was an instance, okay, of an organization. People love stories. People want to hear stories. And of course, stories might not just be 
um, when A and B happened and all that, like we said, yeah, it could be relevant anecdotes to this. So we are talking about failures of organizations. And maybe here we are talking about poor customer experience. And then we have an organization that everybody knows, or a good number of people know, or that I can introduce to them and make them know and tell them how that resulted into the collapse of that organization. They can connect the dots. It's, it's relatable, okay? Case studies, okay? They enhance our, our points and you know they make our content more memorable. Um, for some of us, we might not remember, maybe those who are science students here, you may not remember who or how you are taught the, um, what do we call it now? First 20 elements, is it that what is called in, in sciences, chemistry? But if you are like me, in my own case, they taught us a song. And with that song till now, I can still write those elements. That is the power of storytelling, okay? So we need not shy away from using that tool effectively because it's going to reinforce um, whatever we are telling our audience. And we should ensure that they are relevant, not things that are, um, not totally relevant to our discussion, okay? And of course, let's encourage participation. I mean, in any kind of, in any kind of um, delivery, even if it's a business pitch, participation can go to the extent of saying, I hope you, are, you understand what I'm talking about. And a nod here or a yes there or continue, we are following you. You are, you are engaging them, you are making them participate. We are not radio stations that has to broadcast, even these days with calling programs, radio stations now have feedbacks, all right? So we don't just go on that trajectory of, you know, just pouring and pouring everything, anything and without having them um, to contribute. And for those of us who are facilitators, we know that we are not there as teachers. We are not lecturers, we are not university dons or professors, we are facilitators. We are to facilitate a discussion on how to command the room. So my role is basically of questioning, is basically of directing when the discussion is going out of hand and then injecting my own idea of what I have brought to them. So we need to be conscious of that. Um, make it participatory, encourage questions, discussions, activities that will involve them. Of course, in some of our classes, um, we dance. In some of our classes, we do games. We do um, practical examples, calling one, two, three people to come out. We do um, sessions where we group people and all that into groups, and they have activities, competitions, and many other things, um, brain teasers. Um, icebreakers and all that, they are all good. Of course, visual is videos. And all. So how do you then master your class? I talked about it earlier, inject humor. Um, sometimes, even if you are not sure you have that level of um, control on humor, it comes from the class. There is someone in the class who will do the job for you, is the clown of the class. It was always throw up something funny, then jump on it, okay? All right? Sometimes they say something funny and they see that you are not flowing in and they're asking, sir, what is your opinion? You know, a pause and a suggestion of saying no comments. We only sit another laughter and then you move on. If you know that you are not someone who is giving to more and all that, then be empathetic, okay? Be empathetic. Um, there are situations where um, people um, without sense of modesty, I was in a class somewhere in the East and after the class, a man came to me. He said, you are the reason, things you say today are the reasons why I'm going to improve my performance. You know why? He said, because the organization has not been treating me well. I've been a good salesperson all before now, but they are not treating me well. So deliberately, I decided to start performing poorly. Can you imagine that? So you need to be empathetic with their cause. You don't know where people are coming from, okay? So 
we need to be careful with our tone. Sometimes we speak down on the people. We talk down on them. That is not fair because for most of us who are professionals here, you know that there is no organization you go to. You will say some things that we eat some notes and they'll say, yes, yes, yes. I think this thing you said, you need to tell the management. The management is here. Or sometimes they just say, you know what? This entire class, we enjoy it, but it's not totally for us. You should have brought the management staff. So for every organization, there are peculiarities, there are issues on ground. You need to be empathetic with their cause, which is, you know, putting yourself in their shoes, not just in their shoes. Walk a mile in the shoes and see how it feels. All right? You need to be empathetic with their cause. Um, then maintain a positive um, atmosphere. We talked about our language, the conciseness of it. Avoid jargons. Um, those are technical words that they may not understand. It may amount to speaking over people's heads when they don't understand what you're talking about because you have made it um, excessively and extremely technical. And of course, seek feedback. Seek feedback. Some of us don't like feedbacks because sometimes it's awful, sometimes it's not too palatable. But each time you are in that place where when you don't want to take feedback, remember someone who said feedback is the meal of champions. So indeed, if you want to be champions, if you want to command the room, then you must embrace feedback and conclude strongly by reiterating the actionable takeaways and call them to action. Thank you so much. Um, I hope I didn't exceed the time too much. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Wow. A round of applause for our speaker, guys. I'm dazzled right now. I'm dazzled. I wish I can stand on existing protocols, but I can't find any protocols to stand on to just say, <laughs> yeah, I need to stand and give a round of applause to our speaker. I wish I can stand on existing protocols. So <laughs> let us give a round of applause. That's that I'm coming for your template. The template is very, very catchy. Um, yeah, thank I've, you so I've, much. I have some things to learn. So, guys, um, a point of correction here that boy is not like the science students that Olami did sang about that mix chemicals, he's got a science background, like <laughs> him, but not a science student. I want to believe so. No, 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 <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that kind of science student, <laughs> I don't even know how to mix chemicals. Okay, very good, good to know. Um, so let's see the questions pouring in. We already have a question from um, Uzoma earlier on. Uzoma, would you like to verbalize your question or you want me to read it for you? Um, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, maybe she's left. Okay, she's still in. Um, she said, how do you know if and when your humor will fall flat? That boy, you, you seem to have, you caught to me as someone that has mastered the art of naturally coming up with you know even your facial expression sometimes is like um you can even come yeah, you can go ahead you. oh yeah so i've gone ahead already even before you spoke no no worries um uh, i don't know if it is it was this guy that uh, sabino so some of you some of us naturally even our facial expression said will make people laugh like you know <laughs> even you so that how do you tell if it is i was just saying if you know um, Oh, sorry, Uzoma, you said? Yeah, so that I hope you got the question. So how can you, what, what, what any more tips on around you more and, you know, knowing when to or when not to, how can you sharpen that skill around infusing no more, please? Well, um, <laughs> thanks for the compliments. I think at about now, I should mm -hmm. add um, comedy to the portfolio. <laughs> but the truth is, um, I don't know. I don't do anything. Um, sometimes I don't even laugh to what people find funny. I mean, I think it's, it's, um, it's, can I say it's natural? Or I, I just love laughing. I love making people smile, at least. And what we are talking about here is not to become a full blown comedian in the class, but make them giggle, make them smile, at least. Um, you can compliment people. Um, I don't know. I love your shirt. I love it. 
he looks like one I've always had it. I don't know. I don't know. It, it just occurs, for me, it occurs naturally. But this is a catch. Remember I said it's not always about humor. There are some people that can put in this their head statistics that is designed for next generation and they will keep reeling it out. If that is your strength, use it maximally, okay? Um, sometimes I get into a class, especially if they don't have name tags. Maybe at most I'm able to remember two names or people who are active. But there are some people in a class of 20, once they have gone around, they know all their names and guess the sound that is most interesting to anybody, the sound of their names. And then you begin to address them. You are relating with them by calling their names, even without tags. I mean, that beats anybody. It shows that this person is interested in me. I have to reciprocate and be interested in that person. So it might not totally be about humor, all right? Whatever you have seen that is a strength for you, bring it on board and use it maximally um, for your game. Yeah. I hope that partially answers the question. Oh, absolutely spot on, um, Dapo. Um, Dapo, I, I should have been, I should have tried to be selfish before asking Uzoma's question, but like they say, ladies first, because I also have like one or two questions. So coming for this session is like coming to a clinic to learn from the champion. So it will be good um, to also glean one or two things. So my question is... Okay, is... sorry. So sorry, Jab. Yes. I... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Dapo. Thank you so much for the presentation. But I don't think he has actually answered my question. Okay. Maybe you ask you ask yourself. I know yes. I use the yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so yeah. So you know what you've just said now, I totally get it. And of course, yeah, that's fine. That's good in that line. But I'm talking about humor, actually. I know you don't have to be humorous and it's not necessary, but I'm saying when you actually do need to use humor, you know, it's a very sensitive because you have to say something that people will laugh about or people will laugh to. So it's, it, it might, it sometimes it's very uh, sensitive because, so I was thinking in line of, you need to be very careful what you are joking about. So for example, you don't want to joke about things that, that are as delicate as religion or politics or something or culture. So I just wanted you to throw more light on that in terms of what areas should you not joke about? Because there are some jokes that you would uh, tell. As funny as it, can, it might be funny to me, it will not be funny to Jab because I've, you've just touched a very sensitive area. So I just wanted you to talk about, you know, what should you not joke about? What should you not be humorous about? Okay. So that's actually yeah, where I, I wanted to. I, okay, thank you so much, Uzoma. I think in your question, you have even helped me to answer it partly. <clears throat> Right, <laughs> it's not even about jokes alone, even examples, the examples we make, we need to be careful exactly. About. exactly. I think, um, as mature people, we should be able to understand the sensitivity of some discussions. And, um, I, I, I was in a, in, in a virtual training, I was training the staff of CLAM for those of us who know it's a church, and I used an example about rape. And two people came after me, you know. Um, thank God I could make them smile, so I wiggled out. But that was the last time I ever used that example. I, I, I never used it again. Not even to modulate it. I never used the example again, all right? Um, I don't want to go to it. But it wasn't as if I was saying something off, but it was too sensitive to, to take, all right? So like you, you, you said, um, Things that are, that are sensitive, like religion, not that I can't joke. I joke about religion, but what kind, okay? Exactly. So we're, we're in a class. We're in a class, and someone says, um, says something that is church-related. Um, um, you know, for those who are used to church, if you give them a microphone, they can start by saying, praise the Lord, and we laugh. <laughs> and then, at that point, I can say, when is it time, when it's time for offering? Uh -huh. I yeah. like joke, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not using my joke against your the, the core of your beliefs. Absolutely. Right? I'm not talking against hijab. 
I'm not, I'm, I'm not making jokes against hijab. I'm not making jokes about manners or prayers or how they pray or which pastor is not which pastor. All those could be very sensitive, all right? Um, I could get into class and say, I'm dressed in my Sunday best. I mean, looking like how I go, to, you know, on this, you know, we, we, we should be mature about it and be also be sensitive about it. Politics, I can say jokes about politics and it won't be hurtful to anybody. All right. So if, if somebody, you know, they might throw jabs at you as such that, are you not going to collect all the money and say, ah, I look like Senator. I'm not a Senator. It's a political joke. All right. But I'm not, I'm not hitting at anybody. Okay. So um, we, we just need to balance it with our sense of maturity. Um, I may not be able to draw the line and say, this is where you don't go, this is where you go, but just approach it with a, a sense of um, maturity. Yeah, thank you for, I want to believe you killed that, um, you know, that question. Um, somebody dropped a message in the chat room, uh, which is David said, Maybe another way to know that your joke or your yeah whatever humor you're trying to introduce, the it's the mark is when you are the only one laughing. So David said, I once shared a joke and he ended up I was the only one laughing. So that way, next time you know, I think I can do better than that, you know. So um, course, exactly. Course, so yes. you know the punchline <laughs> when you have to repeat that joke, then it means the punchline wasn't gotten. So you probably know you need to do better. So. And, and, and some jokes could be too intelligent for people to get at that moment. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So sometimes, sometimes if you, you don't get it, to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes if they sometimes if they don't get it, I just go things like, "Don't worry. Before you get to, you get the joke." That's another <laughs> joke. <laughs> true. True. Know? Yeah. Absolutely spot on. Yeah, Dr. Please, I would like you to just give one one tip on controlling the room for a virtual event because it appears like. You were people like you that maybe you could have considered modeling or catwalking or whatever runway modeling, where you find it easy to just catwalk into the room like uh, Alinko. Who, who remembers Alinko in Papa Jasko? You know the way. Yes, sir. You know the way Alinko will walk forward and even backward. Yes, sir. So that room is physical, but what about when it's virtual? So how do you control your room in a virtual event? If you if you don't mind, one minute because. Um, we yeah. If you don't mind, please keep it going. Okay, okay. I, I, I'll be I'll be quick about that. I think um, virtual classes are more difficult to control. All this we are talking about controlling having your audience go with with you and all that. You have thirty people there, twenty five of them are in the kitchen. How do you get their attention? But um, I I think our opener might do the the, the magic. Um, you're not saying you're saying things out of the regular, but things that they need to know, things they need to hear. All right, you're not starting straight with your contents or with your material, but you're starting with things they need to know about their industry or they need to know about their craft. That will get that attention. And uh, more importantly, there's a principal person you need in your virtual class, and that is the admin. I've been in a class before. The admin left us and we went. In fact, when I finish, I have to call and say, bros, I don't finish. You need to come back and take over. So you need the admin, yeah. you know? You need admin very, very more, more importantly. Right. Right. Aside, now na, na God hand you, you deal. Yeah. You don't even, you don't, we don't know who is sleeping. We, we don't know who is, who is exactly. in the kitchen. Exactly. Very spot on. Yes, we've got Terry's hand up. Let's see if we can take Terry and maybe one more question, and then we should be looking to wrap up in the next um, five minutes or so. Yes, please, Terry, go for it. All right, good evening, uh, good evening everyone. Sir. Yeah, I just wanted to just uh, give my own contributions to what uh, Dr. said about uh, the virtual uh, classes. Uh, I, like, like he said, I think it's, it's very difficult to um to be put to to fill in the room or control uh, participants in a virtual section especially uh, if it's a section wherein the participants are not even putting on their videos if they're putting on their videos uh that may be a little bit better but in a case where they are not putting on their videos it's very tough so from my own experience what i think is number one uh the topic of the discourse matters a lot the topic that you are training on matters a lot. If it's something of, it's of interest, uh, you have more people uh, engaged in the conversation. 
And the second side uh, to that also is how you engage the audience in that in in that uh, virtual section. How you engage the audience. So if you do more of talking, you have people leave. But if you do more of interacting, so intermittently you need to get the audience to either type something in the comments or give you a feedback or give you an emoji or something to just ensure uh, that you are that you are carrying them along. And of course, you need to also ask questions. I, I, I have a particular example of, of a particular event I went to. It was a conference and uh, one of the speakers was from the UK. Apparently, I felt I felt he had not uh, done uh, more of, and he's a top top coach in the UK. He had not done a lot of it. Uh, I feel uh, from that class that day, he had not done a lot of virtual sections. So it was more of uh, uh, talking, talking, talking without even having any feedback and all that. And at the end of the day, he called me like, I did that. I said, well, you did well, just that you didn't carry more of the people along. So I think uh, from my experience, that's very, very key. No matter how good you are, you must use questions, you must use interactions, you must you must have them use that comment section. Otherwise, you probably will be talking to yourself. At the end of the day, if that's a question, nobody's answering. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that contribution. Spot on, Terry. Um, can we have, is there any other question before we call on a council member to give um, some appreciation to our facilitator and um, also welcome the guest in our midst? Any other question? Um, the session is being recorded, just so you know. Um, so we're going to um, share the link to the recording later on um, in the what in um, WhatsApp, WhatsApp group. So, but for those that are our guests that are not members, um, we would like you to drop your details, your email addresses, so that we can share the link to the recording with you. Um, if there, if there are any other question, um, please, you, John. yes, we're, please. Okay. We're gonna be uploading to YouTube and then of course, as we normally- oh, Beautiful, do. beautiful. So we can always, uh, we can always make that happen. Yes, um, um, because of our time, um, yes, another round of applause for our speaker in person of um, Dr. Dapo Omojola. Is, um, if we were to pay for his time, one hour to come speak to us, um, I'm sure after we'll probably have to get a loan from, say, Bank of Industry or something to make this happen. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> even more in itself. Yeah, yeah. So we are so practicalizing the class now. <laughs> He said what, uh, Terry? That's practicalizing the class. Yeah. You more right? <laughs> yes, I'm learning already. I'm yes. putting to use. I'm putting mm -hmm. what I learned. So a round of applause again for Dr. Dapo Modula. Thank you so much. And then let's um, pay way for Julius Afolabi, a representative of the council, to give a vote of thanks and welcome um, the guest in our midst. The floor is yours. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm sure that uh, we have all had a, a very, a very great time this evening. Uh, Dr. Dapo, Dopsology, as we call him. And uh, if you are very, um, very good on social media or conversant with social media, you know his um, intro, how he gets into the mind of the people. He's hey, you. <laughs> And and, uh, and most of the time, when my daughter sees his content, she say that man that used to say, "Hey, you." <laughs> so that 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 that's the way of that's another way of getting into the room. You just have a way of spicing your entrance. You get into the room with a lot of executive presence and all that. So depending on your audience, you can get into the room. And you can get into the room with substance, your mastery, and you know series, mental filters, and all that. So it's been a wonderful and awesome time tonight. I believe that we have all gleaned one form of learning or the other. The slide presentation was awesome. And then our conversations and uh, were also very, very uh, interesting and welcome. So on the behalf of the, on behalf of the, the council, I want to appreciate Mr. Dabo for sharing his own contributions to our knowledge tonight and the responsibility of every member of the community. I call on you, special team, to also do the same. So you have ranked a lot of knowledge. 
felt a well of knowledge as well to contribute to what we have. So, and I, I also understand very well, while I acknowledge our senior bosses in the room, a number of them are up here. Thank you very much for sparing time to show up here tonight. And I also want to welcome anyone that is joining us for the very first time. Do we have any of such persons that is, we are just um, getting to know about Aftia tonight, or this is your first time of joining us in our buffet? We have intellectual buffets like this um, twice in a month. So, um, is there anyone that is um, just joining us for the very first time so that we can welcome you, especially in the way we have welcome people in? Anyone? 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 You can just unmute and say, I'm here. It's part of the human. It's part of the human. Anyone? So, so I'll count for so, so, we need to do more evangelism. Yes. So, I'll, I'll count. I'll count more now. And this is exactly this what is exactly Aptia needs. Exactly 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 needs. Every single one of us will pull in our crowd into these conversations. We'll have a lot of combats. So we are not doing enough in terms of evangelism. Uh, so it's supposed to be like today now, since yesterday, it's supposed to be a TP evangelism. I even do uh, a reel on it to invite people to the conversation. There are quite a number of people who need this knowledge that we have shared today. A lot of people that need it. A lot of people don't know how to enter the room. A lot of people don't even know how to command the room. So, and there are so many people that are interested in public speaking that don't even know how to start and how to. So, they are out there. So there are hungry people out there, but if you don't tell them, how will they know? And if they don't know, how will they come? And if they don't come, how will they grow? So the, the job is on every single one of us. So I believe that. And if they don't grow, what do we do? And if they don't grow, that means they remain where they are. And it's our fault because we, we had the opportunity to help them grow and we did it. So it's an interdependent world. An interdependent so, world. So I want to please um, implore every one of us to make this our call to, not just for the membership team, but every single one of us. If we pull our crowd here, then we will have to defend or upgrade our, our Zoom, um, I mean, I mean, facility. So and that's what we are looking forward to. So thank you very much tonight, everybody. It's been a wonderful time. I'm sure that we have sure added to what we know today. We have a better way of getting into the room. We have a better command of the room that can bring us recommendation and referrals and also grow our income. Once you have recommendation and referral, the reward system jacks on. So and that's what we want as facilitators. So thank you very much, everyone, for showing up tonight. And I know the next month will be very much better than what we have tonight. And all those that contributed and asked questions, somebody was asking questions in the chat room. In the chat room. You know somebody was asking a question in the chat room. Yeah, we saw the questions, but we said they can always reach out to that for okay. social media okay. and those and then um, engage it further. Like it just shows how impactful the session was. Well, but if it's to be asking more questions, so you can reach out um, beyond us. I agree. I agree. So thank you very much, everyone. So on the behalf of the council, I want to appreciate everyone for showing up tonight. So back to the host for the closing prayer. Ah, uh, closing prayer. You see, talking <laughs> about that, we will call on uh, Chief Imam uh, Shola Oyibade because uh, so that uh, he can take the Aluala and uh, every other thing. So thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining. We appreciate your time. Yes, the Chiefs in the house. So the session is officially over. Um, thank you for your time. We hope to see you in our future. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and prosper, all of you. Ministry go fit you, or can be considered. You might have a ministry. You did well tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shola, 